There are present attestations about reincarnation, including those based on scientific data, such as the case of Dr. Ian Stevenson from the University of Virginia, the most serious and prestigious researcher who has studied multiple cases of children remembering past lives. Here in the Personality Studies Division, modern science is coming head to head with the mystical beliefs of reincarnation. Its founder is psychologist Professor Ian Stevenson. For over 40 years he has traveled the world tracking down those children who claim to be able to recall a past life. Over this long period, he believes that a significant pattern has emerged in many countries. I was simply watching television one day and I saw the BB special on reincarnation and it was very accidental and uh, Ian Stevenson was standing there talking quietly about case studies he had uh, conducted over a 15 or 20 year period and they showed on the television the book 20 cases suggestive of reincarnation I thought that might be very interesting so I went out and bought the book and I started reading the book and uh, one of the things you'll find that when you read the case studies rather than talk about what, them, what they are without reading them closely, there's a kind of force to the case studies that is really enticing, uh, enthralling. Stevenson is the primary prime mover of the uh, data because uh, he's made it a, um, uh, a research project for 30 or 40 years of examining children and seeing whether their claims to have relived, a, be reliving, to have reincarnated are actually substantial. There are well documented cases as a Leninger family in the southern United States. James, the son of Andrew and Bruce, ever since being a baby began to amaze his parents. A contemporary couple from Lafayette, Louisiana highly educated Christians who were completely opposed to the reincarnation belief. But the indisputable and convincing evidence for them to change their minds came from their own son since he was two years old. Once again, Charles Gibson. And now, one of the biggest questions of life. What happens when it's over? Heaven? Hell? Nothing? Or might there be a fourth possibility? Reincarnation. Could we come back as someone else? Here's Chris Cuomo with two down-to-earth parents who thought they understood the mysteries of life. That is, until their toddler began to talk. On March 3, 1945, a 21-year-old Navy fighter pilot on a mission over the Pacific was shot down by Japanese artillery. His name might well have been forgotten, were it not for the remarkable, some might say unbelievable story of a little boy named James. Okay, this is me tough. I need somebody to help me. All right, I'm the volunteer. What do you okay. want me to do? Okay, I'm just going to climb this thing and you have to hold me in case I fall. Done. James Leiniger is all boy, six years old, and full of spirit. This is a special plane that goes in reverse. You don't see a lot of that. James knows a lot about planes, especially war planes. What kind of airplane is that? It's a Corsair. His parents, Andrea and Bruce Leiniger, say from an early age, James would play with nothing else. He was obsessed with airplanes. If you look around the house, that's all you'll see. Airplanes, helicopters, aircraft carriers. But then, when he was two, the planes James loved suddenly began to give him frequent and frightening nightmares. I'd wake him up and he'd be screaming and he'd always be laying on his back, kicking his feet up at the ceiling. And I'd say, baby, what were you dreaming about? And he'd say, airplane crash on fire, little man can't get out. They sound like typical kitty nightmares, but Andrea says they went on the same way for months. Maybe too much TV, but James was just two and his parents say only watching Barney and Teletubbies. Teletubbies! And Andrea and Bruce say they weren't watching World War II documentaries or conversing about military history. This is an F-18? No, that one. So what explains the nightmares and James's strange obsession with airplanes? I talked to my mom about it. 
a lot of times my mom had said maybe he's remembering a past life. What did you say? Uh, politely, baloney. <laughs> Andrea and Bruce of Lafayette, Louisiana are a highly educated modern couple. To them, the possibility that their little son James was manifesting signs of a former life was, well, a little out there. You know, having a past life is not the initial conclusion that you come to. You try and figure out any other way he could have. Did he see anything? Has there ever been anything on television, anything that we've discussed? But as time went by, Andrea didn't know what to believe. Here is James at age three, going over a plane as if he's doing a pre-flight check. He would continue to say and do things that were puzzling, like the time his mom bought him a toy airplane. And I said, oh, look, there's a bomb on the bottom of it. He said, that's not a bomb, Mama, that's a drop tank. A drop tank? I did, I'd never heard of a drop tank. I didn't know what a drop tank was. Andrea's mother suggested she look into the work of counselor and therapist Carol Bowman. Bowman has written two books, both supporting the proposition that sometimes the dead can be reborn. We are taught from a very early age in this culture, in the Judeo-Christian culture, that reincarnation doesn't exist. Once you observe this in a child, and the evidence is very compelling, you have to open up to another explanation for what is going on. Bruce was deeply skeptical. He said there has to be a logical explanation. I don't believe in past lives. I don't believe in this stuff. Here it comes. But with the violent nightmares recurring three and four times a week, the Leinigers felt they had to do something. So with guidance from Bowman, they cautiously began to encourage James to share his memories. They say the result was startling. The nightmares immediately started reducing in frequency. Uh, he went down from three or four times a week to maybe one a week, one every other week. And at that point was when he started to articulate more about these past life memories. Seems normal enough, a little boy improving when his troubles are directly addressed. But Bowman says this is more, that James was forthcoming because this is the age when former lives are most easily recalled. They haven't had the cultural conditioning, the layering over of experience in this life, so that the memories can percolate up more easily. These memories tend to fade between the ages of five to seven. His parents say between the ages of two and four, James would reveal extraordinary details about the life of a former fighter pilot, mostly at bedtime, when he was drowsy. Bruce said, um, what happened to your plane? He said, it crashed on fire. And Bruce said, why did your airplane crash? And he said, it got shot. And Bruce said, well, who shot your plane? And I'll never forget the look on his face. He went, oh, the Japanese. Still, despite these extraordinary stories, Bruce remained dubious. Almost to prove they couldn't be true, he began to piece together the details James was sharing. And what he found, he says, shook him to the core. For in many instances, the stories appeared to match the facts. James seemed to be recalling real events, real people, in the life of a man who'd been dead for almost 60 years. Coming up, a toddler, just three years old. So how does he know the pilots from a World War II squadron?